Hi guys, uh, just quickly before this video begins, here is something that I forgot to speak about during the video, which is adjusting your bandwidth settings. Now, for some reason in the new Firestorm update, it defaults your max bandwidth out at the maximum, which is something like 3000, um, and you really don't need to have it set to that. So under your quick preferences in the bottom right hand corner, uh, you just click on quick preferences and there you can see you just adjust that to the what I guess is considered safe value of 1500. So uh, yes, just quickly before the video starts. Hi guys, I'm so sorry for again, <laughs> um, a really long delay in a new video. I was actually supposed to do a video for my friend Ember and I had it recorded and everything was going smoothly. I was editing it and everything. And then I got halfway through the video and I realized that the audio had corrupted and you couldn't hear anything. So I was just really unmotivated to re-record it. Uh, I will be bringing that video out. That is next on my, you know, roster. <laughs> Um, but for now, I figured, you know, I would make like an emergency video because, um, as I'm sure you're aware, everyone has been kind of going a bit, you know, crazy about this new PBR update because, um, at least in Firestorm, and I've also played around with it in Alchemy Viewer, basically it's messing up people's lighting because essentially the lighting is dynamically changing the exposure depending on the brightness of your background. And I will give you an example here. Basically, the way it works is that it takes the majority value of your screen. So you can see on my screen now, the majority value is very, very light. It's white. Um, if I move over to say this, you see it goes crazy. <laughs> um, the same thing over here, you can see it goes crazy. If I zoom out a bit, you can see it calms down. Um, so basically, oh God, sorry. I'm, I, I still haven't fully configured um, my bandwidth settings with the new update. So ignore the little bits of lag you'll see in this video here and there, but I have come up with some quick fixes um, so that when you're on the go on the grid and you're switching between event venues and stuff like that, or you're shopping or you're you know, at your home, or your Linden home or wherever, that basically you don't need to go into menus, tweaking things and all of this. You can just press a button and it'll automatically adjust. Now, obviously it's not a hundred percent, you know, perfect. It's not, it, it is an imperfect solution, but it's the only one I've come up with. So in Firestorm up here, we have this little um, screen icon. And if you click on it, you can see I have a whole bunch of presets here. Now, the ones that I've made today with the new PBR update installed are this dark BG, high quality dark BG regular, light HQ regular, and medium HQ regular. And these are the ones that I'm going to be showing you today how to create. And essentially, these are my quick fix. So at the moment, I'm on the light background regular. Um, HQ, I would only use if you're taking pictures. Um, and now if I pan over again to this background that has more dark bits in it, and I switch to say medium regular, you can see it fixes itself. Uh, if I switch to dark BG regular, it's a little bit darker. And I tried with this medium one to take the median values between light and dark, but that it, it was really strange. So the medium one is very similar to the dark one. It's literally only one like exposure point lighter essentially, but I have noticed that in some cases it's helpful. So the medium one is not compulsory. Really, you only need the dark one and the light one, especially if you are using my wind lights, which are, um, let me find them which are here. So the one I'm currently using is this one. Uh, obviously, if you've purchased these, they're a dollar bee on my marketplace. Um, they also come with this and this. But at the moment, this is all just based on this one, just the regular Firestorm Windlight, which is 
generally quite bright. Um, I have a previous video documenting how I set that up. Uh, if you haven't updated to the PBR update yet, but for now, uh, you know, these, these settings with a little bit of tweaking should work with pretty much any sort of standardish wind light you have, such as Cal wind light or um, some of the studio wind lights that come with Second Life. So closing this again, I'm going to hover over this again and click here on graphics preferences and it'll open your preferences. Another way to do this is by pressing Control P on your keyboard and it'll open it again. And then you make sure that you're in the graphics tab. And as you can see, I'm on my dark BG regular now. And really the only difference between the dark, medium and light that I've messed around with is this exposure button here. The other settings are the same for all of the regular ones and then modified for the high quality ones as well. Um, so all the high quality ones are the same and then all the regular ones are the same. But first things first, I'm just going to walk you through the regular ones. So let me just quickly switch over to my medium regular and open this back up. And another way that you can do that is also coming to load and then pressing OK. And you'll see some things will change. Let me just show it a more extreme example with this and it'll lag for a second. And there we go. So obviously I haven't fully figured out my settings yet. I think I should probably bump this down a little bit <laughs> and this one. But anyway, I'm going to load in just my um, dark BG regular for now. And so I will walk you through all of the settings and then afterwards I will put on the screen the differences in exposure between dark, medium and light and then on high definition it's the same. So it's the same for all of those. Anyway, so first we have this quality and speed performance, which I have set to high because I have a gaming PC. Um, if you don't have a gaming PC, then you will want to work within this range. Um, of course, you can go higher than high. Like if you want to take a, I don't know, a profile picture that's really zoomed in maybe then use it. But I would recommend generally having it set a little bit lower. So I just have it on high. Um, next, I have these on. I have screen space reflections turned off when I'm in my regular quality one versus my high quality one, just because you're not gonna find that you need them. Um, just for walking around and stuff like that, you can technically also turn off transparent water and mirrors. Um, you probably, not going to use that unless you're role playing. Um, so there is also some flexibility there. Next for shadows, I have turned off projectors. Projectors are basically um, if you res something and you go to features and light and you click here. Here you can pick a projector texture thing. So for example, if you've seen on Marketplace that people have created like rainbow pride projectors, then they have a rainbow texture in here, basically is how it works. And then you can use it as like a light source in pictures and stuff like that. Or you can even attach it to your avatar and it might have a rotation script in it so that as you're walking around, your avatar has pretty shadows on it. Um, generally, again, you're not going to be using this unless you're taking pictures or unless, I don't know, you want to show off. <laughs> um, like if you want to look pretty at an event, then maybe keep it on projectors as well. But generally you'll only want sun and moon. Then reflection detail, again, this relates to mirrors. So if you decide to uncheck mirrors, then just keep this on static only, or it might gray it out, I'm not 100% sure. Let's see. Yeah, you could. so I've turned off mirrors and you can see that it's... Um, grade some stuff out and basically if the whole mirrors thing is irritating you like the pbr thing i would just keep mirrors unchecked and then you can probably walk around with your regular thing but as said because everyone is updating because firestorm only basically tolerates the latest three releases um eventually you're going to probably run into issues with that as everyone slowly migrates to PBR texturing. So you might encounter issues with that. So I would, I would personally recommend just keeping mirrors on. Um, but again, personal preference.
And then um, I keep it to static and dynamic, which basically, um, and I'm going to link a really good breakdown of this done by, um, her name is, oh, I found the link earlier. Her name is Inara Pei, and she has done a really good breakdown of basically what all of this stuff means, like individually in detail, in greater detail than I could explain. Um, so if you want to read that after this tutorial, then by all means, go ahead. It'll be linked in the description down below. So for reflection detail, basically the reason I keep it on static and dynamic is so that it's flexible, intelligent, kind of, it judges itself. Um, again, this one, I would recommend either playing around with static only or static and dynamic. I would not recommend using real time unless you're doing pictures, because basically static means that it's only going to reflect the environment. Dynamic means it'll also reflect avatars, but like intelligently. And then real time, I think, is just like, you know, it, it reflects whatever it sees in that moment, depending on where your camera is and what your camera's looking at. Um, reflection coverage, again, these, this manual and terrain, um, the terrain thing only refers to second life terrain. So if you have like a skybox or whatever, it won't count. Um, I keep this on full scene, but um, if you really want to improve your rendering, set it to none or manual only, meaning that you have to, in individual cases, turn it on. And then point lighting, I just kept this on the default. And basically this just has to do with like your general lighting. Um, mirror resolution, do not go to 2K. Uh, it will lag you out like crazy. <laughs> um, I would only do this if you're doing pictures. And even then, only if you have a beefy computer. And then finally, I have this set to every third frame. By all means, keep it on every second frame for your day-to-day -day use. So unless you're taking pictures, again, second or third frame, do not go for every fourth frame. It'll take a lot longer to load. Um, and then all of this, I've kept on whatever my default was. Um, draw distance, I wouldn't really go lower than this. It'll start looking funky. This object LOD, I wouldn't go higher, meaning in this direction towards one uh, than two, because that'll really lag you out if you don't have a BV computer. And for everyday use, generally, you won't need it. Um... Basically, what this does is it determines which levels of detail that the computer is allowed to show. Um, and the higher it is, the closer to the highest detail um, level of detail it'll be. So if you set it to one, it'll only be able to show the highest level of detail. If you set it to two, it'll be able to flexibly switch between those, essentially. And then the lower you go, the more levels of detail it'll show. Um, flexi prims, you can turn this off if you don't use flexi hair, but if you use flexi hair or like you have, um, for example, a common use of it is like palm trees on your sim, um, that maybe use flexi prims, then I would keep this on. So yeah, and now to the exposure, I'm going to pop up on screen the differences between, um, light, medium and dark for the regular quality, so the day-to-day -day quality one. And these exposure values are the same in the high quality ones, but all the other settings are different. So now that I've showed those on screen, I will switch over to my high definition, medium lighting and take it from there. Okay, so as you can see, there aren't actually that many changes. I have, again, bumped up the LOD factor a little bit just because for me, when I take pictures, because for my brand at the moment, I'm mostly doing decor, it can be really annoying when the LODs keep messing up in pictures. And so I just have it a little bit higher um, just so that there's less of a likelihood that the LODs will switch down to the lower one. Um, but unless you're doing like lots of environmental shots, if you're really only doing like pictures of avatars, close up and stuff like that, then, you know, you can keep it on too. And then 
For the quality and performance, again, I've kept it on high. If you have a beefy PC, you can bump it up to in between. High and ultra, I would not go all the way up to ultra. You really do not need to. Um, and then I have all of these settings on because especially if you're taking pictures at sea level with the real terrain and the real sea in Second Life, uh, you're just going to want to have all of these on just in case. Um, for shadows, I have projectors enabled as well now so that, again, with those projector lights that they actually show up. And then reflection detail, I've set to real time. Uh, do not walk around with this on if you're on a sim that has lots of mirrors and reflectives and stuff like that. It will lag you out. Um, reflection coverage, I've kept on full scene. Point lighting, I haven't touched. Mirror resolution, I've upped a little bit. But uh, this is a case-by-case -case thing. If your picture doesn't have any reflections in it, feel free to keep this on this or just turn mirrors off. Um, and then the mirror update rate, I've bumped all the way up. And basically this update rate is as you move your camera around, um, but whilst the reflective object is still in view, um, it basically dictates like how quickly, how, how many frames per second it's updating those reflections and maintaining a higher quality. So that's basically it for this. Um, there's really not that much to it. I had my friend Kit help me out with this. So thank you, Kit. That was really helpful. <laughs> uh, she also kind of showed me around Alchemy Viewer, but I'm not quite comfortable enough in Alchemy Viewer to do a tutorial just yet. So uh, I'm going to work on that first and sort of try maybe get comfortable with it. Um, I am also planning on bringing out a Black Dragon photography tutorial. Um, I did record it once previously, but I really hated how it came out. So I'm kind of thinking about how to sort of go about it in the most intelligent way possible. Um, I think I will probably do one shot that's environmental and one shot that's avatar based because the lighting can be a little bit different depending on how zoomed in you are. But yes, for now, as far as Firestorm's concerned, that'll do it. I will probably also do a PBR tutorial in future because I work with PBR materials um, professionally outside of Second Life and um, they're really not as complicated as they might seem. Looking at them for the first time, obviously, it could be scary. Um, however, you can just avoid them in your day-to-day -day use by switching over to Blinfong. Um, and those of you that use Maya might be familiar with Blinfong and those of you that work in The Sims... Uh, creating custom content, probably recognize this. Um, Blinfong basically just means not PBR, so not um, like real-time materials where it's like dynamic with the environment. So obviously if you have PBR, which stands for physics-based rendering, as far as I can remember from school, <laughs> as far as that's concerned, it's like dynamic with, again, the physics around you. So if this probe had, say, a, uh, my, my teagle pet, Sirius, standing next to it, it might reflect him. But if you have baked shadows, then obviously it's not going to interact with the environment. Yeah. Um, and up until this point, the closest thing we got to that was normal maps. But essentially, because normal maps aren't reflection-based, they're based on the actual depth of the object, the lighting isn't as accurate to the environment as if you were using PBR with metal. Um, so yeah, I, I, I will probably do a tutorial on this in the coming days. I will try and dumb it down as much as I can because it can be really intimidating um, if you only know layman's terms for people to suddenly come in with all of these industry term and terms and all this terminology that you don't understand and stuff. And I know that that can be really daunting at first. So yes, let me know if that is something you want to see. And yes, that'll do it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next time. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.